Good morning. Good morning. How are you this morning? My name is Sally Tebow, and this is the Isn't It Time Facebook Live show this morning. We are talking, let me just get my phone heat turned down here. <laughs> We're talking today about overcoming the fear of rejection. So as you hop on today, just say hi. Let me know if you can hear me. As you know, we had some issues last week, but I'm all ready to go just in case you can't hear me. And we've got a bit of a delay. So uh, we'll see how we go today. Let me just get everything up and sorted. I hope wherever you are, it's lovely. Um, what wild, wild weather we've had. Isn't that incredible? And um, uh, my gorgeous friend in Canada, I was just talking to her this morning. She lives in a place called Carrot River in Saskatchewan. And uh, they had uh, wind chill yesterday, brought it down to about minus 48. Um, good morning, Tracy. Uh, minus 48. And uh, as I was talking to her, she said, oh, I think it's warmed up. It's minus 23. I might go and sit outside. <laughs> she came back two seconds later and said, actually, it's minus 30. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> oh, that's cold. That is so cold. Yeah, yeah. Morning, Donna. Yeah, it is, isn't it? It seems better. Uh, as I said, I'm kind of just waiting um, at the moment. <laughs> Got it all set up. But yeah, it does seem better. You guys can hear me, obviously, this morning. Let me know how your week's been. Um, as I said, our um, thoughts are with our friends up in Townsville. Um, we've got some friends actually in Townsville and they've been sending uh, videos on their Facebook page. Um, it was a bit scary that um, they're just in that cleanup mode at the moment. What a mess. What a mess. So freezing cold weather, bushfires, floods, heat. Mm, wow. We don't think climate change is upon us. It is. All righty. Let's get on to it. This morning we are talking fear of rejection and uh you know i see this happening up this is a big deal for me a uh, number of years ago the fear of rejection so and it's popped up um over the last couple of weeks with various clients so i thought it would be a good um good facebook live to do on the fear of rejection um just let me know if that's something that you really need to overcome let's pop a little comment in the box and uh, good morning, Deborah. Oh, hope you're feeling better. Deborah, how's that hand, the wrist? Um, Deborah was playing with a seven year old and ended up in a, with a broken wrist. So let me know how you are, too, Deborah. Um, yeah, is fear of rejection something you need to overcome? You know, it's the, it's the thing, fear of rejection. Um, is like a chameleon um, and it masks itself in so many ways. But it's also that destroys, morning Janet, um, a fear of rejection destroys the dreams of so much brilliance and it's, it's insidious. It's like a chameleon. It shows up in other ways, usually as procrastination, perfectionism or problem seeking. There's usually the three ways it will show up. So rather than make that call, write that blog post, get that video out. Oh, good, 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 good. Thanks, Deb. Um, I'm glad. The fear of rejection will show up as, oh, um, I need to just answer this email or I need to just clean the fridge. <laughs> I need to put the clothes on the line. And so the procrastination holds us back. The other thing where it shows up is perfectionism. It's not perfect yet. Now, this is what I struggled with um, when I was writing my first book, David's Gift, was the perfectionism. I'd get stuck on a chapter or a paragraph and just over and over and over again. Underneath it all was actually the fear that the book wasn't good enough. Um, and I remember the first time I had an editor look at it and they made quite a few changes and I was just, oh, well, good, this isn't good. What if no one likes it? it and so that book um, actually took about two years um, to release that should have taken you know a year but took two and that was the fear of rejection because the fear of rejection especially when it comes to something like writing a, a, your story is painful like we've talked about this before um, when I heard Dr John Gray men are from Mars when from Venus talking with Oprah back in the 80s and he said it took so long to get that book out because he was terrified he would be rejected um, so it's perfectionism, you know, having to make everything perfect. And the third thing, um, it shows up as problem seeking. 
you'll go looking for the problem. I can't do this because the time's not right. Um, I don't know enough yet. Um, they're not the right. They're not my right market. I haven't found my right market yet. Um, I don't have the right tools. I need to have all the right tools. So it's the fear of rejection often shows up as those three things: procrastination, perfectionism, and problem seeking. And it's in those moments when, if you go, "What's really going on for me here?" I'm scared they'll say no, and they won't want me. They won't want what I want. That fear of rejection. Can anybody relate? Just let me know. Um, number two, it's really important. It's in fact critical to find the root cause, to find the cause of the fear of rejection. And um, a couple of oh, it would be about a year ago. Yep, me problem seeking. <laughs> That's right, Tracy. Yep, problem seeking. We do, don't we? Go looking for that problem. Um, I. I we tapped around a lot of this, uh, my fear of rejection about, oh, I guess it was about a year ago when it really came up. Sounds familiar. <laughs> Good, yes. Um, and you know what it was? I, I have to share this story with you because even I still giggle about it now. You know, I'm looking at all, you know, my mother and my father and something happened, at, you know, with the teachers. I'm looking all around this. And I remembered uh, the night of my 16th birthday party. And... Um, <laughs> I was going out with this guy. Oh, man, he was so gorgeous. He was captain uh, of the rowing team for one of the private schools in Melbourne. So he's, you know, that kind of fabulous looking guy. Came from a very wealthy family. And um, we actually, the way we dated was we meant to mass together. Um, we used to go to Sunday night mass together. He'd walk past my house and we'd walk to mass together. We, we wouldn't sit together in mass. We'd sit separately, sit with our own families. But then he'd walk me home and then we'd sort of sit outside and talk, you know, chat, chat, chatting. Um, you know, nothing ever really happened until um, uh, but the night of my 16th birthday. And uh, and so in my mind, he was my boyfriend, you know, even though it was just going to mass on a Sunday. <laughs> he was my boyfriend. Um, and so I had this 16th birthday party and all my friends from school came and I asked um, this guy, Tim, and his cool, gorgeous friends um, to come. And he was late. Um, and he made an excuse when he got there that he um, he had, it had been rowing training. And I thought, well, that's a bit, okay, I kind of get that. And I remember thinking, oh, the other guys are here. And I come here. I didn't, anyway, he was, these are the memories. And uh I still remember we had a bungalow uh, out the back where my sister and I slept, beautiful sort of separate um, apartment we called a bungalow, sitting outside and he came along and he was very um, apologetic and kind of a bit flustered. And anyway, okay, he's here. He's late, but he's here. Then on the Monday night, you know, my girlfriend phoned me because, you know, you could only phone when nobody else was on the phone, remember? You know, it was on the wall. And she said, I have something to tell you and I think you need to sit down because everything's very dramatic when you're 16, remember? Very dramatic. She said, I think you need to sit down. I said, oh, okay. So I sat down. She said, the reason he didn't come, Tim didn't come to you or he was late for your 16th birthday is because he was at his girlfriend's birthday than that before. So he left his real girlfriend's birthday and then came to mind, but I didn't know he had another girlfriend. That... <laughs> <laughs> that was my fear of rejection, my 16-year-old heart. <laughs> Morning, Elle. My 16-year-old heart broken. I was rejected for some girl I didn't even know. Obviously, I wasn't pretty enough, skinny enough, wealthy enough, smart enough, whatever was going on in my 16-year-old brain. But that, when I cleared that, everything changed. So when you're looking for where the fear of rejection comes from, Sometimes it'll just pop up. You know, it's the funniest thing about that memory. I always, I remember what I wore. I had this blue, very short cheesecloth dress on with little kind of mirror beads all over it and big yellow platform shoes. Remember those big yellow platform shoes? I was very sexy, I must say. <laughs> My 16-year-old heartbroken. Amazing what you remember. So it's important that you go looking 
finding the cause of the pain and the fear of rejection so you can release it. He was my first pseudo boyfriend, other than the guy called Peter Allen in grade two, but I dumped him because <laughs> he wouldn't sit with me at lunchtime or something. I don't know. I never really had a boyfriend. So that was where it came from. So when you when you go and look, you have to find it because otherwise if you don't, all you're doing is continually putting a mask on and you and the procrastination, perfectionism and problem seeking stuff will show up all the time. So when you find the root cause, where is it? And that's when if you don't know, just keep asking those questions. Where did this start for me? Where did it start? It could have been, you know, your um, family. It could have been friends. Look what he missed out on. Do you know I've Googled him? Oh, no, yeah, Facebooked him. <laughs> I think I found him. I don't know. He doesn't look like that anymore, obviously. Um, he's certainly not. The guy The guy that I found um, was a bit tubby. <laughs> uh, very funny. Isn't it funny? when you, Anyway, thank goodness. Isn't it fun, Facebook? Oh, you find people. Um, yeah. So find the root cause. Find the it's so important that because then do you know because then I could go back and look at okay where this catapulted and and packed on top of each other so that was where that fear of rejection started then then it just morphed into other things you know I remember you know I wanted to do acting and I was terrified of being I could never do an audition I was terrified of being rejected um, then I you know the jobs that I didn't go for. Gosh, I remember having an opportunity. Uh, fat ball, probably. Yeah, that's exactly Tracy. Fat ball. Um, I remember going, had an opportunity to go for a job with one of the major networks. Um, and I didn't. I didn't because I was terrified to be rejected. It wasn't good enough. So find, see if you can find it. And we're going to do, we'll do a little bit of tapping on it before the end of the show today. The third thing. The third thing I want to share, and this is um, my my mentor, my sales mentor, um, who I happen to have cohabitated with for 37 years. <laughs> uh, for those who don't know, my husband, Jerry, has sold over $300 million in commercial real estate um, in the last um, 30 years here on the coast. But he also began his career, sales career selling vacuum cleaners and insurance door to door, um, trained as an architectural draftsman, but realized very quickly he could make more money selling. So he's had a lot of experience in sales and we often talk about this. And when I was, it really came out when I sort of wanted to do, be doing the work that I'm doing now that I realized that, that I had some work to do in the whole area of sales. But he, there's a, there's a couple of things that he, he said to me that I want to share with you um, that he uses. You know, when he's putting together, I, I, it's really interesting watching him uh, in sales because he, there's no emotional connection to it. It's really interesting, isn't it? But he says, if you understand, it's not about you. If you go into that process, whether that's being um, stepping on the stage to be to speak, whether that's to write a book, whether that's uh, in a sales conversation with somebody, whether it's selling your product, it's not about you. And if you can, if the minute you think it is, that's when the fear of rejection comes up. You have, it's what you do. It's what you have to offer. That's the difference. That it's never about you. And if you fall into it thinking it's about you, that's when the issues occur. So when you're going into this, into an organ, a sales, it's not about you. Now, for instance, if you're applying for a job, it's not about you, it's about your skills. They're not rejecting you. They're rejecting your skills. It may not be right right now. Um, if you are putting a proposal for an idea and they say no, they're not saying no to you. They're saying the idea isn't right right now. It doesn't matter. It's about. It's not about you. It's about the idea, and it may not be. You know, a fit right now. So it's never about you. The second thing is, it's a numbers game. It's purely and simply a numbers game. And um, the, many of the um, guys in real estate work on a process of, of the number six. So it's one in six. Um, they're not always looking for the immediate sales. So if you're, if you're not talking to enough people, 
if you're not sharing your idea to enough people, then that's where the issue occurs. It's a numbers game. So if you think about that, it's not about you. The root cause of the rejection when you are younger feels like it's about you, but and we take that on board. So the pain, you know, just ah, what if they say no to me? What if I'm not good enough? In this, in your work, it's never about you. It's about what you bring. It's about what the other person needs. Um, if you're on stage, for instance, and and um, and speaking from set. It should never be about you, ever, ever, ever. Um, whenever I'm speaking, um, I always it's always my focus is on members of the audience, never about me. If you fall into that trap, you're lost immediately. You're lost. So think about that. So so reduce, find the root cause, and be very mindful of the direction. I want to talk about um, something that we have um, up coming up now. Um, uh, I've spoken to Jerry about this for months. We're now in the pre-launch of this, a sales mentoring program um, where you will work with him and me um, and we're combining EFT and sales processes and uh, it's a mentoring program. It's not a, um, it's not a uh, you know, like a, an online download information and a walk away it's actual mentoring program so if you're keen or interested um you just book in uh, that the this is the link um for uh, a, a chat with me to see if it's something that fits if it's something that fits um as i said we have we're in pre-launch at the moment um, for this but it's um very exciting uh, where you'll actually get to work in real time um in this whole process so uh, if there's something you're keen on um, just click on the link um, that I've popped in the comments and um, let's have a chat to see if it's, it's a fit for you so it'll be he and I that you'll be working with as I said he will be the sales mentor and he will walk you through the, the process and then you'll work with me with the uh, limiting beliefs any limiting beliefs fear of rejection fear of sales whatever that is um, but you'll be mostly it, it'll be a package so if you're interested, um, looking for a, uh, a strategy session, we can have a chat for 30 minutes to see if it's a fit and it's something that's right for you. It's quite unique and uh, we will discuss it on the call if it's something that is resonates with you. Um, I just want to pop this up, Tracy. Um, where am I? Tracy, Tracy. Why is it not coming up? Tracy, where are you? Yeah. Oh, no, I don't want to hide the comment. I want it up. I want it up. Another issue I have is feeling that I need to have all the answers to every question. I feel like a fake. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, that's a really powerful process, isn't it? Where you feel like a fake. That's part of the imposter syndrome. Um, what I've done, you know, in my area, I, um, that often comes up. And I'll always say, to a client, what do you think is the answer? Or I'm always up front. Like, I really don't know the answer to that, but let me, you know, give me a day to find a solution. Um, it always, I think, is is good to be right up front and say, I don't know that. So that's part of the imposter syndrome, Tracy. So if you can, um, if you can tap around that, feeling like the imposter, that, that's, you might find it, um, find it there. So, um, yeah, that's a really good question. Really good question. Mm. Need to have the answers to every question. But, you know, it's kind of a bit of a mum thing too, don't you think? You know, like we feel like we've got to know everything. <laughs> and we don't. And we don't. All right. All right. So, as I said, strategy, if there's something a fit for you. But those are the three things. Think about this week. Procrastination, perfectionism, problem seeking is fear of rejection, find the root cause and remember it's not about you. So let's do a tapping session today um, on fear of rejection. And, uh, you know, this is a process, the fear of rejection. It's not, um, it's not something that kind of 
um, you know, once you once you've done it, 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 it happens. Like once you've solved it, it's not. It it will raise its head in other ways. And so when you're in that procrastination, is to go to that right question. You know, what's going on for me? What's what's the fear I have right now? What's going on for me? And be mindful. Is it rejection? Is what is that what I'm feeling? Is that the feeling of rejection? So um, you always find the answer. I want you to think. Um, a master of research. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Mm. You know, mm. got to have all your ducks in a row. Master of research, absolutely. All right, um, let's do some tapping on this this morning. Um, I want you to think of, a, if you can think of a situation where you, um, you didn't... Uh, offer somebody something, uh, you were on a sales call, you had an idea and you didn't put it forward. I want you to think about that. I want you to think about that time. And I want you to go to how you felt. Um, I want to how you felt, like that fear of rejection. I'm just pulling, I'm trying to pull one in right now for myself. Um, how you felt. Okay, and uh, measure that on a scale of one to 10. I'm just thinking in my mind where I'm going to go with this. Okay. Even though when I remember this incident, I can feel that fear of rejection. I deeply and completely accept myself and how I feel. Even though I know I procrastinate because I'm, I have this fear of being rejected. I deeply and completely, I'm going to share with you what I can see right now after we've done this chapter, accept myself and how I feel. Even though I can feel this fear of rejection and it's quite strong in my gut and it stops me from growing my business. I deeply and completely accept myself and how I feel. Okay, tapping. This fear. What if they say no to me? This fear of rejection. What if they think I'm not good at this? What if they say no to me? This fear of rejection. This procrastination. This fear. Feeling this fear. I remember this time and this fear of rejection. I can feel it in my gut. What if they say no to me? How will that make me feel? What if they say no to me? Maybe I'm not good enough. Okay, just take a deep breath and let it go. Now, it's interesting because I'm, I'm, I'm actually thinking of another incident that's just come up for me, so I'll do some tapping after this. Um, I want you just to just sit with this. Okay, sit with this. See if you can write down all the times in your life when you've been faced with rejection and tap on all of that till there's no more charge on it. Be surprised what comes up. You'll be really surprised what comes up. Okay, let's do a reframe, shall we? And then I'll share what I saw. <laughs> okay, here we go. Even though I had this fear of rejection, I know it's something I can continue to work on. I choose to feel the fear 
and do it anyway. Even though my fear of rejection has held me back in the past. I choose to believe it's not about me. Even though I've had this strong fear of rejection for so long, I choose to forgive those who have caused this pain in my heart so I can move on. Tapping. I choose to forgive those who have rejected me in the past. I know this is not about me. I choose to be able to promote what I do. I know I'm good at what I do. I choose choose to forgive all those who have rejected me in the past and see it as a great learning experience. I choose to embrace my brilliance. I choose to step into my own brilliance. Okay, take a deep breath. Now you can do the... Um, power pose here if you want. In fact, I'd actually even suggest you do that before you're going on a sales call, before you're making that a, a pitch, before you're going to write a chapter in your book or blog or do a video. Do the two-minute power pose um, just to lock in that and, uh, and just really anchor it in. I've just got to share with you what I just saw. Does anybody remember the, um, the, uh, the episode on Friends? where they're on the balcony and they can see the ugly naked guy on the on, on a balcony <laughs> just as i was going in that tapping there was a guy sitting on the balcony i can see and i thought he was naked from i've just looked <laughs> if you saw it but he wasn't he had his he's had his bathers on <laughs> he's sun tanning on the on the balcony <laughs> but just the things you see up here in the high rises amazing all right how let me know how that went Anything that came up for you, let me know what it was. Oh, okay. Great, great, Donna. Fantastic. Yeah. Revisit it. Revisit it. It's layers underneath this, layers and layers and layers. And remember, uh, if you are interested in um, solving this once and for all and with a mentor and with a mentor that will help you create, um, um, make sales easy for you. Um, if you're in that situation at the moment, um, hopping, booking for a 30-minute strategy session, um, <laughs> my binoculars out, Janet. <laughs> uh, when I bought Jerry the binoculars for his birthday and made him promise not to look in people's windows. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. All right, everybody. Um, great show today. Um, thank you for being on. Um, pop in and uh, and book that strategy session if you're ready to release it. Release that fear of rejection and build your business. Um, oh, okay, Donna. It's been a real issue this past week or so for me to reject. Oh, there you go. There you go. It's um, it, you know, timing is everything, isn't it? It's I just believe timing. Timing is everything. Great. Thank you, Donna. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, Debbie, I know, right? <laughs> oh, um, so fun. Much fun, much fun. All right, everybody, we're right on 8 o'clock. Have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you all this time next week on the Isn't It Time Facebook Live show. Have a brilliant weekend. Bye for now.